Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, guys, and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I'm here with Danny Tortelli. Hi, Matt. And that's right. My name is Matt Schultz. <laughs> and we're just, you know, I'm just forgetting my name because we're excited to talk about Pokemon Sword and Shield. Nothing else matters. Our names, our birth dates, our social security numbers. Nothing else matters now. Right. right. I mean, I forget all that stuff, too. So um, <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that uh, there's a lot to talk about and I don't want to uh, to fumble over it. So, Danny um, and I both got to watch the Nintendo Direct probably multiple times at this point. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I remember I woke up, uh, and was like, crap, I'm 15 minutes late to like, it's starting. And I'm like, F it, I'll just get ready. And then before work, I'll sit down and watch it. Um, so sure enough, like at work, I got to sit down with some coffee, like Twitter had already gone ablaze with stuff, but I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to check. And <laughs> I finally got to watch it. And, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. That's just the first impression. Danny, how about you? First impression before we jump into all these specifics. Yeah, I had set an alarm five minutes before it was supposed to happen because, you know, we're, we're, we're in the U.S., we're in the central U.S., so it was happening in our early morning, I'll say that. And uh, I think my body was just so excited I woke up like a half hour before my alarm was supposed to go off. Um, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I mostly enjoyed it. A few questions, nothing I'm really like angry about or nothing I'm really upset about, but definitely some questions that still have to be answered. But overall, I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it was. uh... So we have a number of things to go through. Uh, This direct introduced us to a ton of, 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 I mean, it was a huge info dump about Pokemon, which is great. Uh, Enough of an info dump that... You know, it kind of wet our whistle a little bit for, you know, all things Pokemon. But it still, I think, did a great job at keeping us in suspense, um, keeping a lot of things, you know, uh, just kind of under wraps, uh, which I'm excited about. But, no, you know, November 15th is a long way away. Uh, so mm-hmm. a lot can be revealed. And I'm sure we'll get another Pokemon Direct and more information uh, within that time. But let's mm-hmm. just jump right into it. Um, so... Da-da-da-da. First and foremost, November 15th is, of course, the date, uh, which we're really excited about. That's traditional uh, Pokemon launch date. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's pretty interesting because now it's got us thinking about like, okay, so is Zelda in December? Uh, Is Zelda also in November? I mean, because Zelda, again, it's a remake, but not a huge, you know, not this mass. It's not Breath of the Wild, right? So is there something else coming in December or November? Um, And, And Pokemon and Zelda and a missing one are all gonna be playable at E3. So it's oh, like yeah, okay, Luigi's Mansion so... three, right? Mario, Mario. So there's a, there's yeah, and 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 more to come or whatever the dot 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 was. So um, right. But anyways, in November uh, on the fifteenth, we can start uh, Dynamaxing Pokemon. So what yeah. the heck is that? It's a phenomenon. It is not a dietary to... supplement. <laughs> um. Well, in the Galar region, this is a thing uh, where Pokemon can take on gigantic appearances during battle, and it's integral part of the Pokemon battles in this region, apparently. Pokemon mm-hmm. from the Galar region are able to Dynamax, and when they do, they become tremendously strong and receive a boost uh, to their overall power. Um, and, of, of course, a trainer can only do, uh, like, a, a basically initiate a Dynamax uh, to one of their Pokemon in a battle um, for up to three turns. Uh, and of course, I think they have to possess some sort of band uh, similar to uh, Mega Evolutions. Uh, so all the moves of a Dynamax Pokemon will turn into special max moves, which of course also uh, trigger additional effects. Um, so if a Pokemon, they gave an example as like a normal type and has a normal type max move, um, they give the example of max strike. Uh, it also gets an additional effect of lowering speed uh, or the speed stat of the opponent po- uh, po- Pokemon. So um, interesting, right? So for one thing, I, I was kind of like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like you're summoning these like massive versions of your Pokemon to kind of face off with each other. Uh, I know the internet's been all over the place uh, with their, you know, overall expectations of how this might change the game. 
uh, or how it might enhance um, Pokemon battles. But what are your thoughts, Danny? First impressions of that. Dynamax, I immediately thought, wow, they are really trying to integrate the aspects of Pokemon Go in here. So I know you don't play it too, too much, Matt, but I'll show you a quick little. So this is kind of what it looks like near near my my place right now. You'll see up here is a gym, right? When you go to a gym, because gyms host raids every now and then of like the more rarer Pokemon, right. um, sometimes weaker ones too, but more often than not, it's some kind of rare specialty one of like the month or something like that. In these gyms, when you go to a raid, the Pokemon you are fighting is giant. Their HP is much bigger, so it takes a lot more to take them down. Hence why you, in Pokemon Go, you need to partner up with people to do a raid. Um, and then when you defeat them, you see them like go from giant, you know, Magikarp to like shrink, 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 down normal size. <laughs> okay. um, so as they were explaining that, I was like, this just feels like the more thought out version of what Pokemon Go is doing. Um, yeah, there's this, yeah. Go for it. And you get to be giant too. It's not you just going against a giant one and you don't stand a chance like in Pokemon Go. That's why you need a ton of people in the raids in Pokemon Go. Whereas this one, it sounds like um, you could do it yourself, or if it's really bad enough, you can get like two or three friends, and that should be fine. And that should be good right. enough. Right. Yeah. I guess it's. I'm curious to see how it's going to work because if, to me, it's like, oh, they Dynamax their Pokemon, so I'm either just going to get destroyed, or I have to now use my Dynamax at the same time. You mm -hmm. know, it's kind of like, well, he used it, so now I have to use it. Like. Yeah. I don't know how else it'll work, or like, can you be like, no, I'm gonna wait to Dynamax my Pokemon, because I know like with three turns, I can still defeat him, you know, with with like my Dynamax Charizard, you know, like if I could survive yeah. that long to Dynamax him, I could take out, you know, I, I don't, I, it's really, it's just, it's gonna be interesting to see like, will it slow down the battles? Um, it seems like it's only happening in gym battles, um, in those, you know, the massive soccer arenas. Um, so, and the raids. Well, and then of course, yeah. There's dynamic. Uh, there's max raids, which we'll get to. Yeah. Um, but for now, as 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 part of like gameplay um, and the actual battle system and like getting through the like the, the story, I think it should be interesting. Um, I'm hoping for more information on that. But you did bring up a great point. The max raids, I think, are super cool. Uh, mostly because it was like, okay, w other than linking up with my friends to get into a battle the one thing i really enjoyed about go which i never really got to be a part of but one thing i think from like as a as a bystander i'm like oh that seems really cool is our, yeah. our raids are getting together with people and tackling something and with a lot of like mmo style games where people get together to try to you know take on some greater stronger thing mm -hmm. um i love the idea of like getting together and going after i don't know like certain types of pokemon and of course the the pokemon that show up uh in these max raids change based on the terrain based on the time of day based on the weather um which i thought was also really cool and of course you get some sort of like experience and loot and all kinds of goodies from defeating one um it'll be interesting to see how they keep that um a uh like an interesting part of the game you know, like, how mm -hmm. are they going to keep drawing people in? I can see them doing that, though. Like, being like, oh, like, this month you can go up to the, like, the northern part of the Gala region to this particular wild space, and you might find... Charmeleon. Um, so I think if they do something like that, where there's, like, kind of, uh, you know, different events that happen within these wild spaces uh, for group raids to happen or max raids, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And you could do it both locally and online uh which should be really interesting yes yeah i think they they learned the lesson that starlink did not of of making <laughs> this as accessible as possible local co-op or online co-op um i think that's really beneficial i hope it's not i hope the raids aren't how do i want to say this so like i said in go some really intense hard to defeat legendary pokemon you need like at least 10 people to take it down right. um I hope that's not the case for this game where it's like if you don't have like a whole handful of people, you won't be able to get that Lugia in yeah, the raid. If, if or, you don't have all four, right. Or like I hope they're like they're like NPC 
you know, allies. They said they did confirm that. I don't know if it's for local, but they did say online um, you will get assigned uh, like basically bots to help uh, like assist you take down Pokemon. That um, and that'll be good because otherwise it almost feels like it's behind like a an upgrade wall, that kind of thing. Like that you'd have to have real life players to enable to you know um, real friends to get real through this. friends. Hey, that's that's part of the game. Um, uh, or you just buy two switches and <laughs> play them next to each other. Um, just me and me. There there may be the, <laughs> there may be people out there. Um, so. Uh, one thing I thought was actually interesting that you brought up was this uh, this idea of like Starlink was like something that we both really wanted to play co op, uh, but online we like, the mechanics of the game just you you had to be together and um, on it was the it was like the same you could use you would basically use one person's profile but both people screen. could have their own their it was split screen but oh were you not on two different switches. No, we weren't, which was even... Oh, you're right. They were many steps behind on that. Right, right. So, but I think what's interesting about uh, Sword and Shield is that the the way the wild areas exist are almost like, okay, there's several wild areas that are connecting to multiple towns, routes, whatever. Um, but the wild areas themselves serve as like this open plane where you can obviously see and catch wild Pokemon um kind of explore the camera looks a little different it's a little more open world than pokemon's ever been mm -hmm. but the towns and places might still be a little more linear or just a little more traditional in terms of how you navigate them but yeah. i think what's i think what makes sense is that players uh you know can can join in cooperatively in prop and only the wild spaces can people show up um which i think is kind of genius that like like it kind of makes sense that oh yeah i could see danny here in the wild like uh, while on my journey there's my friend like we're in the he's in the wild but i'm not going to see danny like roaming around the town and like at the same gym that i'm going to try to defeat like you know like that as cool as that might be um you know i it, it's just like a, a unique way to kind of get around that it's like oh you can co-op in only these certain spaces but these certain spaces are going to be really fun like giant pokemon sandboxes um yeah. it would be interesting to see if you can also just duke it out in uh, just any wild space. Just, just be like hey, literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Maybe by the lake, we'll we'll have a Pokemon battle there. That would like, be, that to me would be super cool. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. I I think that's probably. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think that's how it's going to work. Like, I don't think the co-op stuff will extend into the cities because I think when you continue from town to town, it, that'll be more of like the story stuff. Um, and also just people going to like restock on items or, or, um, restock on health. Speaking of which, uh, with health, did you notice in one of the still images in the wild space, someone has a tent? Yeah. So they were talking about how, like kind of building relationships, uh, with your Pokemon, uh, playing with your Pokemon, which has been a part of other games is going to kind of be that, that feature is going to be through camping. Now you can go camping with your Pokemon, um, uh, and then while camping, that's when you can like you know play with your actual Pokemon and develop the affinity with them and, and and as Matt knows, camping is my least favorite thing to do. So now <laughs> I, now I one of my favorite video games too. <laughs> I I mean it's odd that like camping in Breath of the Wild was just like oh there's a like a fire pit or I'm gonna make a fire here and then right. cook something, but like no actual tent. Uh, meanwhile, oh, he like, was he was roughing it in Breath of the Wild, right? Animal Crossing, we've gotten tents. We also have RVs now on the mobile device. Um, <laughs> and uh, and also uh, now in Pokemon. So I love it. I'm, I'm like, this is great. Um, and it really is going with that theme. Speaking of Breath of the Wild, there. I, I hope I'm not the only person who thought this but or heard this. But yes, yes. In the, the, like, there's like the little like twinkling like yeah, noise like that comes up when you're first watching the introduction to... You know, you see Link standing on the cliffside. It's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, yes, yes. I swear that same sound bite plays or is like embedded into some of the music in when they're showing off kind of just like the lushness uh -huh. of the world. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting Breath of the Wild vibes because of that freaking sound bite. Uh, and I watched it again a couple more times. And I'm like, it's still there. Still, yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely, I think, uh, you know, 
uh, inspired by uh, the success of Breath of the Wild for sure. But it also looks, I mean, it's obviously a very different looking game. What are your overall thoughts on just like the look of the game? Now it that you've is. Seen more of it. And it's interesting because like, I, I think I remember when I first started joining this podcast uh, about a year ago. And when we were talking about hypothetically whatever this Pokemon core RPG was, I remember saying just over and over, I want the Breath of the Wild version of Pokemon. Like seeing Link hunt down those boars, I'm like, that's how I want to sneak up on like a, a random Rattata. Like that's, I just want to like pounce behind it and throw, which, you know, uh, is what it is. But like, so then when they were saying, no, it's a core RPG, it's core RPG, I played Let's Go and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to check my expectations. It's probably not going to be anything like Breath of the Wild. It's going to be like how many decades before we get like an open world Pokemon game. And then we saw this trailer yesterday and I was like, they're halfway there. They they like they literally have set aside <laughs> a giant open region called yeah. the Wild Space, Breath of the Wild Space, and yeah, you can, you it, the weather changes. Different types of Pokemon come with that different weather. They also different types come with the different uh, time of day, um, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, oh my god. This and you get the op the open world like yeah. oh there's you a, can turn the you camera know. you can you can go off path you don't have right. to like sit to like you know going up and down and sideways do you, which do you think it'll be too. like a little irritating like being in these spaces and be like wow this is awesome and then you're like back into a town and you're like ah oh, can't turn the camera like I can't like maneuver in the same way I think that will be a small annoyance to be honest because like there will be part of you that's like okay traditional Pokemon game oh my god open space back to the traditional uh back to the traditional it's kind of like a, the original or a Star Fox 64 you know you're on rails for a certain part of it then you get to a boss you're like oh I can fly around now <laughs> all like, you know, like, range mode I hope yeah. there's a similar transition scene every time you exit and leave or <laughs> and enter the wild space <laughs> you're now in all wild mode um, the camera like pans around you 360 like ooh look what you can do whoa, now but right yeah like I the l watching like I'm very impressed with the way it looks um, but I also know like it this is it doesn't look like Breath of the Wild like graphically uh, I'm I'm not necessarily impressed but I don't yeah. feel like I need to be impressed like it's a Pokemon game like the 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 game it looks great and I and generations. And generations of this game are going to continue to improve on what this looks like and what that experience is. But at the core of it, Pokemon is about, you know, catching wild monsters and training them and being excited to, you know, put them into battle and see them grow and develop and, mm -hmm. and change and go off to college and, you know, get, and make, Andy leaves all this make toys a Pokemon yeah. grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, um, like i kind of caught myself in the moment like whoa like this is still like i like it's people are going to so quickly forget that like okay yeah this is not like as beautiful as breath of the wild but like it's going to be so fun to just be in the wild spaces looking and hunting for certain things you know um yeah. and, and trying to just kind of grind your pokemon out in those spaces while you're you know trying to level up before you take on what's his face milo what's that guy's My name uh, there's Milo is the dude with no nose and Leon <laughs> is the kid we all wish we were and he's like oh I got a holographic Charizard you're like no you don't and he's like it's right there <laughs> oh yeah. that, that was me as a kid with the holographic Charizard and yeah. my cape <laughs> my cape with all my endorsements and my weird and weird beard, beard that goes like this purple beard yeah weird. yeah so um really quickly, I'm excited yeah. for oh my, my last thought on that is just like but there, I'm so excited with how they're experimenting, though. Like, I don't know if I ever would have, besides my wild dreams, I never would have actually thought they tried open world concept. And so, like, this gets me excited not only for this game, but like you said, like, the next iteration that comes out in another year or two. Because, you know, that's how Pokemon always rolls. There's, like, yeah. sun, moon, next year, ultra sun, ultra moon. Um, I'm, I'm excited for what this means for not again to play this in six months, but also to play the one that comes in like a year and a half after that, um, uh, just to see where they continue to grow with it. So, right. Yeah. Um, I almost have, I, I've been thinking about playing like going like the last uh, Pokemon games I played were black and white. Uh, I didn't mm. play black and white, too. Um, oh, you didn't play any of the sun or moons. I didn't play sun or moon, I, though I'd be interested oh, in, in going back yeah. and playing them. Um, 
I really enjoyed black and white. Mm-hmm. And then I like, you know, just like life at the time just kind of took over from there. But I've always, I've always still been on the Pokemon train. Like a lot of people, you know, who are like, yeah, this, that's a franchise I would jump back in in a heartbeat if it just like was the right time and like it captured me in the right way. And I think for a lot of people now, like coming back to the Switch, it's like, oh crap, I can have Pokemon on my television. And, and now it looks like that. And it's, I, I'm not throwing like a plastic Pokeball at the TV. Like I actually can catch Pokemon the right way. Um, right. It's, it's really exciting. Um, and I think like, I know a lot of people who are really deep into the, the you know, the meta uh, uh, like plays of the game and how to, you know, like Max how battles work yeah. yeah, and are super into all of that stuff. Like, that's great for them. I hope that they can still find happiness in this game. But like for <laughs> players like myself and like you who like enjoyed Pokemon, um, I think we're all going to really enjoy like just getting back in this together, right? Being like yeah. going through the experience together and kind of just, you know, sharing stories. Oh, have you done this yet? Or have you gotten here? Or like, should we meet up and do this? Or like, what, can, we, can I trade you for that Pokemon? I'm just like, I'm excited for all that, again, all that nostalgia around the franchise. But um, what I wanted to jump into next was Pokemon Gyms. So we kind of mentioned this, but uh, there are like stadiums found all throughout the gallery region. They're very reminiscent of like a Olympic, Olympic, what is that? (laughs) Um, An Olympic like soccer arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something like that, like World Cup stuff. Right, exactly. And, you know, the open rooftop. And now we know that kind of is a thing because you've got these massive Pokemon Dynamaxing in the middle of a battle. Um, I love the fact that, like, anytime you actually face a gym leader, there's, like, an actual audience. Like, it's an event. You know, I love that in Avatar, um, in Legend of Korra. You know, mm-hmm. pro bending was a thing. And people, like, came to spectate and watch, you know, people, like, use their bending abilities it's cool that like the you know and that was also in the show um also mm-hmm. reminiscent of like pokemon stadium growing yeah. up oh f- uh, oh god i love that game but rest, in, rest it, in peace it just you know but like when you grow you know play, going through the gym battles uh in other games just always kind of felt like well i made it you know my mom and dad aren't here like <laughs> i didn't i guess my friends didn't get my facebook invite but it's just me and the gym leader like now it's like a whole spectacle um so just to kind of to share some of the information around that. Um, you know, it says that uh, to become the champion, players will need to defeat the top trainers in each Pokemon gym. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Also known as uh, the gym leader. Okay. Cool. Oh. Uh, spectators <laughs> flock to the gym stadium to view these battles with gym leaders, which often involve intense ch- uh, clashes between Dynamax Pokemon. Um, the matches are also broadcast on television throughout the gallery region, which... I, I I get that that seems interesting. I wonder what that's going to like if that's going to involve some sort of social feature um, or like how that's going to play out um, in you know in the game itself of like maybe sharing certain battles or is there going to be a Pokemon app which is like kind of like the the Pokemon TV network like what you if, could you know could you imagine you could hop in as a spectator and depending on how early you hopped in depends on how good of a seat you have to view the battle and you're like oh <laughs> man i was 20 minutes late now i'm in the nosebleeds oh you're Get just on like step up like, you're, you're there in real life just like, battle tonight right right you're there in real life though just like sitting on your phone you're like oh these seats suck like <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i um I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out uh or if it's just like a something for the lore of the game <laughs> Um, so then they go ahead and they detail Milo, who is the grass gym leader. Um, he's the first one. Surprise. The no uh, nose. <laughs> no, no. He's got freckles, though. He's got like three there. freckles roughly in the shape of a nose. <laughs> <laughs> they say his credo is to always enjoy battles. And he specializes in endurance matches using grass type Pokemon. So um, I will say that I'm a little disappointed like in that I'm hoping the gym leaders are a little more dynamic than, you know, and uh a little more three-dimensional you know like just to, I, w- I want them to have more than just like i've got grass pokemon try your best and then you just scorch them with you know what is it score bunny and whatever other fire pokemon you can get your hands on before yeah. getting to that part of the the region so i don't know what are your what are your thoughts on gym battles overall though i like the i like the spectacle again something else they they 
plugged from from Pokemon Go because whether you're doing a raid or whether you're battling another gym in Pokemon Go, it's set up like a stadium. And I remember when Pokemon Go launched, I was like, okay, I guess they're trying to harken back to like the old shows when they had the big tournaments or the game Pokemon Stadium. Um, But now seeing this for Sword and Shield, I was like, oh, I like it. Like this is right. I part of me thinks it would be funny, but it could also be tedious. Like what if in there they're like, yeah, you got to get a sponsorship. Like there's no way we're letting your your you and your team on here unless you like go around to the little towns and you have to like. Get to get sponsored by uh, uh, nurse, not nurse Jenny. It's Officer Jenny. Nurse, what's her name? Oh God! Uh, it's Officer Jen, uh, Officer Jenny, and Nurse Joy. Nurse Joy. Yeah, like yeah. her her clinic is like a sponsor, and then like um, you have to get a sponsor from like Professor Oak's lab, and like um, yeah, <laughs> well, like, yeah, isn't that? But that's what they said though, right? That you have to get these sponsorships. Oh, they to, did say that. So basically, you have to get. To, I thought I was it, totally dreaming that. No, so in order to get to uh, the gym leader, you have to, like, basically, or even, not even the gym leader, but, like, to get into the gym and, like, do whatever the gym challenge is, you have to be sponsored or get a sponsorship from something or someone. I don't really know what it looks like. But um, jumping to Leon, you know, and his amazing beard and his weird cape, uh, the back of his cape has a bunch of, like, what looks like like company sponsorships like and <laughs> logos all over the back of his cape which is kind of going with that like you know sports theme at like man. soccer theme capitalism is uh, everywhere man <laughs> <laughs> and i i mean i think it's pretty cool right i'm interested to see what that looks like and, and like what kind of sponsorships you get also like if you notice some of those raid battles those max raid battles like a yeah. bunch of players show up wearing a lot of very different types of things like different backpacks different clothing i wonder if maybe like you'll get like certain logos, patches, stickers, and things for your backpack for things that you're sponsored for like throughout the, and it would be really cool to see if like, maybe perhaps like there's a a ton of ways to get sponsored, but how you choose to get sponsored maybe affects certain like stats or I don't know, who knows? Like if you get sponsored by like, like you said, Nurse Joy, you know, like maybe your Pokemon like regenerate like on their own, like, at a certain at a certain rate as you're walking around or maybe if you get sponsored by the local police station uh your pokemon have a like a better defense <laughs> that's so funny i'm just like trying to think of the crazy sponsorships like Silphco, you know the people who make like the different like technology used in various pokemon games team rocket what if they're a sponsor they're like what it's legal we have a 401 c-. you know like we <laughs> we got the right paperwork um <laughs> Have you ever yeah. played any of like the most recent like any kind of sport video game like Madden, um, yeah, yeah, uh, NBA, whatever? Like in the past, NHL, even like five two, years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you ever do like the create your own character and like you start from the try beginning, to like make it look like yourself, yeah, right, right, and then like they're like, okay, you're gonna get drafted. What type of team do you want to be on? Like, or or this team's looking at you. How do you feel? And like depending how you answer, it depends how like good of a deal you get. Like, yeah. can, you, can you imagine if it gets like that nitty gritty? You like you have to sit in on boring meetings in the Pokemon game. Like, <laughs> oh man, wow, they're really lowballing me on this one, aren't they? You really gotta, <laughs> you, really gotta you gotta sign contracts and <laughs> yeah, endorse. <laughs> Endorsements and all that. Yep, that'd be fun. And then Meanwhile, you see your yourself, just and then like you asleep. see yourself in commercials, which would be really interesting, right? Because everything's <laughs> televised in this world. So, so silly. So, of course, uh, they kind of go on to talk about like the people and the culture of the Gala region. Um, so what do they say here? They say in Ga- uh, Galarian culture, Pokemon battles are regarded as the most popular form of entertainment. Pokemon battles are held in stadiums where challengers and gym leaders face off uh, to the passionate cheers of fans and spectators. Uh, the Pokemon League is where trainers gather to compete in Pokemon battles and hone their skills, blah, 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 blah. Players will have, the, uh, have to battle Pokemon gyms found around the region as they try to reach the pinnacle of the Pokemon League and earn the title champion. Wow, that sounds super new and, and fresh. <laughs> um, so they, then they, of course, introduced some of the, like four, four uh, major characters, including Leon, who's the current champion of the Gala region mm-hmm. um, and is like the greatest trainer in all of G- G- Galar, I guess. <laughs> all of uh, Galaria. Yeah. All Galaria. Also, he's very, uh, he's apparently very popular, and it's just like almost too good to be true. Like, 
is like is he hiding something is he actually the bad guy like he's, he's team rocket <laughs> uh, and then his younger brother hop um is leon again leon's younger brother is supposed to be your rival i know a big uh critique of many of the games is like the rivals have gotten just more and more friendly and like can you really like call him your rival rival yeah right like is this the person that you kind of beat up and practice with like yeah because the older know. games is always like you i'm gonna get you one of these yeah days. or like you like, suck uh oh yeah. you beat me well i mean i you, you know, got lucky I'm yeah blah, i was blah. super lucky or i, I my, the sun was in my eyes or something <laughs> <laughs> now like they're they, like you beat me good for you yeah like wow like i i wish i was as strong as you one day like come on so yeah. pop at least aesthetically looks like maybe he could be kind of a punk but i'm hoping yeah. that there's an actual <laughs> rival in this game what a um, twist that would be if we all think leon's definitely got something to hide and it's actually hop he looks like this sweet little punk kid and then he's like the one who's like Actually, I'm Giovanni. Blah. And then he, was just like, <laughs> he called it here. Oh, yeah, Hop's the, yeah, the yeah. mastermind of whatever the team uh, <laughs> rocket is in this game. Okay, right. so Professor Magnolia. Uh, this is the, uh, the older female professor. Um, she's the grandmother of Sonia, who was introduced, who's apparently also an internet fan favorite at the moment for her design and looks. Um, but she's the the preeminent Pokemon uh, professor of the region, and she's mm-hmm. studying and looking into the Dynamax phenomenon. So uh, I'm sure she'll be like, "Oh, here's a here's a Dynamax ring. You earned it." And then, and then, yeah. And then her grandson. Uh, no, no, Le- Leon is not her grandson. Sonia, her granddaughter, apparently, like potentially was at least rumored to be Leon's rival back in the day. Um, but was a childhood friend of his. Um, and also she's the one who's like around helping out her grandmother in terms of her research. Uh, and she also is apparently like a, a big resource for her players. So yeah. What do you think of Sonia and good old Magnolia? I, I mean, I like it. Um, it's, it's the, I, I do hope there's just even a couple throwaway lines of like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, Professor Oak and I, we uh, we went to school together, you know, and like just some kind of tie in. Um, yeah. Just to make it feel like all these scientists aren't just lonely in their labs, hoping that their grandchildren pick up their their careers. Um, yeah, no, I, I like them. I think that'll be interesting. I'm hoping she's a really like crotchety old like Elena Terrell sort of character. Um, <laughs> but that's just that's just my that's my take. Be a dragon. Yeah. Um, be a dragon. That, that's uh, yeah. I, I hope she's kind of sassy. Um, she kind of has a little uh, like a sassy look to her. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But uh, that was cool to see some of the the characters. I'm really excited to see what the gym leaders look like. Um, the the rest even, of them. Yeah. What even the Pokemon League like Elite Four, if that's even a thing in this world, like yeah. kind of. And even just like the random encounters and, and people you meet along the way. I'm always, I always love the character designs of all those folks. And they showed a lot of people like in the world, like people, like children, their parents, mm-hmm. random Pokemon wandering the streets of cities. Um, they even show like three little water fountains that were like designed for like different sized Pokemon that are like in the city, almost like how people put out like dog bowls like here in, <laughs> in, you know, in Chicago um, yeah. in their storefronts. So. The world, they're like doing a good job, I think, making the world look and feel move, like lived in. Um, kind of like, uh, um, oh, what's the, the city from uh, Detective Pikachu? Um, oh, Rhyme. Rhyme, Rhyme City. Rhyme, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, very much that like same idea. Like, we live in a world where Pokemon are also like doing stuff yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah. um, anyways, okay. So uh, let's get into the legendary Pokemon. So at the very Wait. end of the. Sorry, not to cut you off, only because you said this lived in world and I, I should have cut you off sooner. My bad. One thing I did not think they're going to confirm, and I think they did. I think you could see them in the overworld. Like, I think they are they're actually roaming in front of you. They're not they're not random encounters, is what I'm trying to say. Um, are you talking which, about Pokemon? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like we talked about, they are in the wild areas. They are in front of you. However, in other parts of the world, they're going to be random encounters. Like if you're if you're in the grass, um, right? So they will only be walking about in that way in the wild regions of the wild world. wild space. Yeah, yeah, in those, um, in those spaces. So it's also really cool, but also like, oh, come on! Like, 
have them everywhere. Like they'll be, you'll also see Pokemon in towns out and about, which is also right. cool. Right. But it's not like you can go up and catch them. <laughs> yeah, just steal somebody else's Pokemon who's like tied right. to the bike post. Like, oh, my master's inside. Just you know, um, yeah, yeah. No yeah. word yet on like whether or not you can have you know your partner Pokemon uh, hang out, you know, and run around with you, which yeah. would seem like a total easy thing to do in this game. But why not? Right. They all they show is this the trainer running around by themselves. So and especially since like uh one of the new Pokemon, uh as we're I, I think we were about to segue to that, Corviknight is the one you catch that can fly you around, is essentially your fast travel Pokemon. Um yeah. I actually do hope that he like picks you up in his giant steel talons and just like carries <laughs> you away like a la Lord no, of the Rings yeah. and just like he, he so Corviknight, jumping into the new Pokemon, uh, is considered like a, what was it, like a armor Pokemon? Oh, it was like steel and flying. Oh, uh, is it he's called a, a, a raven Pokemon? Um, he's a crow not, beyond not the wall. Yeah. But he actually works with like a taxi company uh, uh, called the Galler Taxi Company. <laughs> and that's what they do. Like, it basically kind of oh picks up a gondola, like a, like this like yellow gondola that you get inside, and it like it's a it's a huge Pokemon. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and it's actually the, it's interesting the way to describe it. Like it could be often seen fearlessly soaring through the air. Many say that the Pokemon foolish enough to challenge Corviknight are sent running with their sharp glare and a uh, cry from this fearsome Pokemon. Um, because Corviknight possesses superb flying skills and high intelligence, many of them work for the taxi company. But ultimately, uh, Corviknight is the strongest Pokemon living in the skies of the Gala region. That's what they said. So really interesting. Height, seven feet, three inches. It's taller than Charizard. Holy so, shit. Weight, 150, 163 pounds. Uh, Pika. <laughs> no. And uh, ability is pressure and unnerve. Um, and again, it's a Raven Pokemon. Another internet favorite is Wooloo. Another sheep Pokemon for all the sheep Pokemon lovers out there. Stealing the hype from Mareep. Oh, my yeah. poor little Mareep. <laughs> uh, the, the white fur that covers Wooloo's body grows throughout its life and will fully grow back in three months, even if it has been completely shorn. Uh, the fur is used for clothing, carpets, and other goods and is very popular at a specialty product, uh, as a specialty product of the Gala region. Uh, I wonder if it's gonna like have to do with like some like type of clothing or something that you know maybe you can design your own stuff. Um, <laughs> the the more wulu you have, the more clothes <laughs> clothes options you have. They live in a herd and mimic the actions of their trainer uh, or herd leader. They dislike conflict, and if they need to escape from enemies, they will simply roll away. They'll just get into a puffball and roll away like a roly poly or Sonic the Hedgehog, or you oh, know. Jeez. <laughs> Or Rolly Boyle. So funny. Uh, yeah. So, or, you know, Samus. Um, <laughs> Just like Samus. We also had, uh, uh, I, I hate this name, Gossifler, which oh, is like a yeah. flower Pokemon that I'm assuming likes to gossip. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's like the, it's the Galar version of Blossom. Right. Uh, they say it prefers land with clear water and air. It has, uh, its pollen has a healing effect and is commonly used as a folk medicine remedy and made into tea given to children Ooh. Uh, specifically oh children who are ill uh, Gossifer <laughs> travels over long distance by getting blown along by the wind it controls the direction of its travels by twisting its body uh, of the, the, the petals and so I actually like the design of Gossifer it looks pretty cool which I was surprised because uh, Eldgoss Eldegoss? The, the evolution of it yeah, yeah. El looks, Eldegoss class looks grass it, 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 it like looks like a, a an actual elder version. It looks like like oh, this was like the young, like hot version of this plant. It was the flower at its prime. At, the, yeah. at its prime, yeah. And then it like was in Matt's office for too long, and now it's Gossifer, <laughs> or no, it's Eldegoss. Um, Eldegoss. But it definitely it looks it looks older. Like I think like the like the um the cotton on the back of its head kind of almost it's like is reminiscent this of like big white and extends hair. this far back. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it says the cotton fluff serves as a cushion that helps to protect Eldegoss's head from damage. The tiny seeds attached to the cotton fluff are said to be highly nutritious and beneficial to both people and Pokemon. Uh, it spreads the seeds uh, throughout the region, making the soil of the Galar region rich and, uh, in nutrients. 
So interesting, just like overall theme with this game is it just it feels very much about growth. Obviously, you've got you know the the Dynamaxing and the giant Pokemon showing up. We've seen a lot of like just foliage, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's like to say uh, the least. Right, and we're 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 seeing these two Pokemon highlighted first. Um, I think it's you know to me, and I, you, there's a, like there's flower shops mm -hmm. um, that were prominent in the the trailers. One of the first the first trailer we ever saw showed uh, the house you come out of with all the like beautiful foliage that's up and around it. So like uh, it just feels like like that's a part of. I mean, growth is always woven into the story of Pokemon, right? But um, it feels like it has an extra like purpose and meaning for for this particular story that's a loose theme i i just thought mm -hmm. was there but yeah um and then there's one more pokemon um which isn't dreadnought it's dreadna um, yeah so he's yeah. the he's a the a bite pokemon um it's a snapper turtle yeah yeah pretty much right um which is actually interesting because uh the word dreadnought is actually comes from uh uh 18th century british like frigate um mm -hmm. massively armored um yeah. it was like the 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 specific this one ship was called the dreadnought and then it so became the, synonymous with like heavily armored ships and of course we got the dreadnought in episode eight of star wars yeah um yeah which was super cool i love that scene um and so anyway starlink that's the big ships in starlink you have to fight are the dreadnoughts oh oh yeah that's right that's absolutely yeah, right so yeah um so Dreadnought is a heavily armored turtle, snapping turtle, um, and it's known to be extremely aggressive, so it takes a skilled trainer to tame and handle this Pokemon. It seems that some trainers will release Dreadnought back into the wild once they discover they can't handle it. <laughs> wow. Oh, I hope um, that doesn't come into effect in actual gameplay. <laughs> 254 pounds, uh, standing at a height of 3 foot 3. Uh, but it's water and rock type. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I I always love a good turtle Pokemon. I just one of my favorite animals. Um, and I'm hoping if he has evolutions that he stays a a quadruplex. I hope he stays on all fours. I don't, uh, th there's so many Pokemon that start out on all fours that like feel more animalistic, like they are actually like they exist, and then they evolve and they're like, now I'm upright. Now I'm civilized. I'm like, it, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but he looks cool. I'm I'm excited by Dreadnought. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree. I hope it, it kind of stays on fours. And then I, um, gosh, I wonder what like what kind of a tank of a Pokemon its evolution would be. You know, an um, actual tank, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe that's like somewhere in the name. But um, okay, finally, um, before we get to the legendaries, I did want to talk about like Pokemon encounters. Um, so they did talk about like you know, being able to see Pokemon specifically in, you know, walking about the, the wild spaces. But um, while you're, you know, kind of rummaging through, you know, different routes and you're in grass, like there will be, um, you'll kind of see little exclamation points pop up when a Pokemon is kind of scrum, you know, scrimmaging around and potentially hiding. And you could kind of basically, I'm assuming you just kind of press A or you initiate the like sneak up and then you're kind of engaged with them. It's less like walking, walking. Oh, crap. Here we go. Do, 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 you know, um, you, you kind of see them pop up more. And it's similar to the way that fishing works in the game, um, where it'll pop up while you're fishing and you just press A and then boom, there you are battling a water Pokemon. Um, I'm not sure what it looks like for when you see Pokemon roaming in the wild, how you approach them. If you're like running after them like you would a horse in you know breath of the wild where you're like i'm trying to catch you yeah uh or if you're just like yeah they look at you like uh you want to fight me okay let's do this uh right. i don't i don't know how it's gonna be um so uh interesting but yeah they did kind of mention that um on their website um mm -hmm. but what do you think of of that like those those dueling ways to yeah. i guess approach pokemon and actually that was another breath of the wild thought i have is think of like when you sneak up on enemies in breath of the wild like you sneak up behind them and you're crouching and it's like okay do i go around the camp of enemies or do i go straight up and and get one you know before they know what's happening um i like that it feels a little bit more intentional um it's i think it's a good compromise instead of just going straight back to random encounters 
um, if that's the way it's actually going about it, the way we've we've spelled it out today. Um, you know, in Let's Go, I loved that they were just 100% totally in the overworld. There was no hiding. There was no nothing. Um, and I was really worried that we were going to go back to random encounters. So I actually think this is a good this is a good kind of middle ground. It's like, you know, there might be some special ones in the grass. It's your you have a little bit more say in if in if you encounter them or not. It's not just going to be some random kind of pop up. Um, so I appreciate that. But yeah, it will be interesting. What if you're in the middle of that lake and all of a sudden, you know, you're just swimming. You're on your little water bike. I love that. The water bike looks really cool. And all of a sudden, just a Gyarados pops his head above water. And was like, I was sleeping. And then it just like tries to wreck your, you know what. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I mean, that would also be great. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by this this new uh, uh, style that they're going for. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, gosh, I just hope like that encounters in the wild spaces, the wild regions, like stay fresh, and that there's like like and similar to Breath of the Wild, where you were like, oh my god, what is that thing over there? What is that thing popping out of the ground? Mm-hmm. Like I hope like really cool, interesting Pokemon have really interesting ways to appear in the world. Or you have a very specific way to kind of discover how to coerce a Pokemon out of hiding. Like, like I just hope that this world is filled with these, like, oh, like, you can only get this Pokemon by doing this thing at this time in this way, and it'll show, and it'll appear, you know? Yeah, did you like, see, yeah, the, like, the, it's got to be this time of day, this type of weather. Yeah. And did you see in the one clip, like, the guy, like, whistled, and then you see, like, wild uh, Pokemon slowly come out of the grass? And like maybe oh, that's, really? a, yeah. that's a trick to trick some of the wild ones to come right, out that worry, normally are hiding. Out, yeah, yeah. I I actually hope that too because like it same thing. It just feels more lived in. It feels more mysterious. It feels more just like, oh, this is a place I would love to explore and learn all those weird right. facts like like Breath of the Wild. Right. So um, that's that's the hope. Um, finally, of <laughs> course, we have our legendary Pokemon. Uh, they had that cool uh, cinematic trailer at the end that showed. Uh, the two wolves. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Z- Z- Zakian, Zakian, Zacian, Zacian, I think. And then Zamazenta, Z- Zama, Zamazeta, I think. Uh, Zamazada or Zamazeta? No, there's an enta at the end. Zamazenta. Zamazenta. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, it's very. We got zen. some time. We got till November fifteen. So <laughs> Zen is in the name. Uh, but anyway, so one of them is a, a wolf holding a sword and the other one is a wolf wearing a shield um and truthfully i think the designs are pretty cool um i think they're pretty they're pretty fun for uh the franchise and i'm really interested to see what exactly they were like freaked out about you know there was that like gust of wind the leaves kind yeah. of go floating in the air and first of all are they like playing like when they were fighting each other like are they like or did they I'm gonna get you, just like, and they're just like brothers, like <laughs> effing around, or were they like, no, we're like warring factions. You represent the north, and I represent the south, and I defend, and you attack. That's the the you know the bind, the, the internal struggle we you know endure for years and years, and, and then something new the, showed up. It's like, oh, there's something bigger than our struggle. Like, yeah, right. Um, so, yeah. yeah, what do you what, what do you think of them? There's a. Uh, I've seen a lot of people comparing them to previous dog slash lion type legendary. I don't know their name because like I haven't played any of the before. Let's go. The most recent one I played was Heart Gold. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been a while. Um, but there was another kind of like I think it was Sun and Moon. The sun, the, the legendary Pokemon in there um, kind of looked like the shield. Uh, Zama, Zama Zenta, um, Zama Zameda, you know, that one. Um, but I thought the comparisons were more like uh, the sh- the sword one looks like Garurumon from from Digimon. Uh, <laughs> you, re- you remember that? And I thought yeah. the shield one definitely looked like they aped the design from Zoids. Did you ever watch Zoids? Yeah. Well, yes and no. Because uh, I know we were talking about this, and you were you were saying that that's exactly what you thought. Like <laughs> this looked like. Um, and you're not the only person that told me that. I've had students tell me like, "Oh my God, it's a Zoid." I'm like, he looks like a liger that put on the like shield outfit. I mean, you it, it, definitely worth all, all you fans out there. Go and watch a clip if you haven't heard of Zoids because you're too young to understand um, or too old to understand. Um, yeah, see when he he goes to like a more. That's like, okay. I think I'm too old to understand. <laughs> he goes oh to God, like he goes to like a liger blade liger, which actually does kind of look like sword. 
um, where he gets more or more cutting weapons, you know, knives, swords, all that good stuff. Um, go to heavy Liger and he gets more like heavy artillery stuff. Shield Liger. He looks like Shield Liger, um, if that's what his name was. Um, so I was just like, I like the design, but the whole time I'm like, you're definitely a Zoid. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I love they look I think they're cool. And I'm it, intrigued whatever that other mysterious legendary is that they're both like, well, if you're not the enemy, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that leads us in I think our final topic is the um recent uh, not recent, but the 4chan leak uh which was posted on May 23rd mm-hmm. um in a specific thread and it actually detailed uh, a lot of things that like were coming to Pokémon that of course were proven true. So a lot of people have revisited mm-hmm. the, this leak as like, oh, it's like actually pretty credible given all the stuff this person got accurate. For example, they knew the name of the brother was Hop. Uh, they also knew Leon. Uh, they also knew the name of Professor Magolia, Magnolia. Mm-hmm. Um, they projected, um, you know, Dynamaxing, like using the word Dynamaxing. So, mm-hmm. like, there was a lot in there that was like, wow, okay, you didn't, you're probably. You can't get lucky with that. Testing the game, like, yeah. So, anyways, but this, this particular leak had a lot more details than just that. Um, and so, the leak included uh, the main enemy or, like, uh, organized crime unit would be called Team Yell, Y-E-L-L. Um, there will be an evil mm-hmm. legendary Pokemon named Etern- Eternatus. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess we should throw out a spoiler alert in case we somehow... This guy ends up being right and we somehow shared his spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, if you made it this far, you probably are actually curious. Or you <laughs> fell asleep. Or you're Austin's mom. Or you're me editing this video. <laughs> yeah, we can't take her taunting the rest of our fans anymore. Hi, Austin's mom. We love you. You're the Thank best. you. Um, all right, so he also says in addition yeah. to Dynamaxing, there will also be uh, the similar uh, g- giant maxing, g- giganti maxing. I don't know how it's pronounced. Giga maxing? G- it's like giganti maxing. I think it's giant giganti maxing. Anyways, uh, apparently it's like it's similar to Dynamaxing, but it actually changes the appearance of the Pokemon that's growing in size. So it's like a whole other version of it. Um, he says uh, their regional evolutions will be a thing with uh, Farfetch turning into uh, Surfetched, Meowth looking like a ball of spiky gray fur. Um, it's unclear what that actually means or how this person wrote it. Um, hmm. Apparently there are chipmunk Pokemon called uh, Squovit and uh, Greednut. <laughs> a Greednut, I love that. That's um, that like hide in trees and attack you apparently and throw nuts at you. Oh, um, yeah. This is where this this guy says to challenge a gym leader, you will need to get an endorsement. Doesn't really explain it, uh, which will then let you take on a gym challenge that needs to be completed before fighting the gym leader. Um, so there's the endorsement piece, and then uh, three gym challenges uh, are described, including one where you have to herd Wulu while providing or avoiding uh, like a certain type of Pokemon. He he calls it an electric corgi Pokemon called Pamper. Um, and that was just one example. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. He said camping will be a mechanic uh, uh, where you uh, will get to play with your Pokemon and let you make curry to raise stats and use toys to raise friendship. Uh, Grookey's final evolution is a giant gorilla that uses a wooden drum to attack, which is basically Donkey Kongas. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sobble's evolution is uh, go. It turns into Sizzle and then Inteleon, which I'm super pumped about because I'm going to go with Sobble. Um, Inteleon is kind of like a, um, supposed to be like a chameleon looking uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And apparently it it has like a spy theme to the aesthetic. And then finally, Score Bunny will have, uh, will have fighting moves, but it's apparently a pure fire fire type Pokemon, not a firefighting. and uh, right. its second evolution is called Raboot. Um, and its final evolution looks like some sort of like humanoid strong ass bunny. So Incineroar, <laughs> but with like a bunny's head. <laughs> oh, God, we'll see. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so that's just a, some of them. It's not all of them, but we don't need to go through all them all. But very interesting, considering this person got a lot of them right. And I, I think we'll probably... 
I think it's like not too far out of the question to say that some of that stuff is probably going to be true, um, considering how accurate all of the other predictions were two weeks before the, the direct. So, yeah. Um, so, Danny, tell me what your, your final hopes and dreams are for this game before we jump into E3, where it'll be playable. We'll see a lot more Treehouse stuff around it. But, um, you know, final hopes and dreams. Yeah, I'm hoping it's a it's a decent story just in and of itself. You know, like I hope it's it's something a little bit deeper, um, just in general, because I I do feel like the stories themselves kind of have been. Again, I haven't played too many of the more recent ones, but even everything I've heard is just like, oh, they just changed the names of some things, but it's the same idea of the story. Um, I'm hoping that the balance of the more traditional stuff in the towns and the open world stuff uh, in wild space is a good blend. Um, and I hope they have all the kinks worked out like they say they will of the, yeah, and all the previous Pokemon will work in here too, uh, with Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home <laughs> right. and all that stuff. Um, right. that's, you know, otherwise, I hope it's not laggy. I hope it's not buggy. And, uh, <laughs> if, if it yeah. looks mostly like what the, the footage looks like in the, in the trailers, I'll, I'll be happy. You know, obviously if it was Breath of the Wild style, I'd be thrilled, but <laughs> if it's mostly just seamless then then that's fine uh, I'd, be, I'd be okay with it i think the game is going to be continue to be polished right up until release um mm-hmm. and my biggest my biggest hopes really are that um there's a lot of social components and that those social components are mm-hmm. uh enticing and and well thought out and uh you know are like feel seamless or, or you know feel like you know i could just jump in with friends and not go through a ton of hoops trying to figure out, okay, when can you be on? Can you meet me here? Oh, wait, I got to connect through the phone and then do this thing. Like, I just want it to work and work well. Um, and, and so I'm hoping so that the online So you hope that part features... is definitely not Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, Game Freak, just figure out your own thing. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited for that stuff. I want to see, my hopes and dreams are more online functionality mm-hmm. that serves the purpose of bringing trainers, friends together to play this game. Um, otherwise, I'm down for the adventure. Excited to play Pokemon come November, along with probably a lot of other games that are going to be out at that time. So, oh boy, yeah. So, if you made it this far, thanks so much. Uh, this has been another Nintendo podcast. We were chatting about the recent Pokemon Direct. Uh, we're excited to hopefully bring out uh, some uh, E3 Nintendo predictions prior to uh, next week's Direct, and then of course analyze the crap out of all of it uh come next week so afterwards yeah um thanks for listening and we will see you in yet another nintendo podcast bye everybody bye